next episode. James Barton gets the measure of his South American Millennium Challenge. Seb Fontaine's World Tour kicks off in LA. The Super Clubs battle it out at the Music Awards. Paul Oakenfold's on the road again. And it's house heaven for Paul Hillier in New York. Britain's most successful dance music festival. Now they're facing their biggest challenge, hosting Liverpool's official Millennium Party for 35,000 clubbers. And the race is on to make it a sellout. Cream resident DJ Seb Fontaine is on a US tour. Paul Hillier's taking on his biggest gig yet, and three DJ heavyweights are on the publicity trail. From its illegal beginnings in mid-80s rave and warehouse parties, clubbing has turned into a global multi-billion pound business. Now major clubs have their own record labels, merchandising and magazines. Every weekend over half a million people go clubbing in Britain. Many travel hundreds of miles and spend between 50 and 100 pounds a night to party hard at their favourite clubs. James Barton started Cream with a £4,000 investment seven years ago. Now it's a worldwide empire. A year ago, Liverpool Council asked the club to host the city's official Millennium Party. It's only weeks away, millions are at stake, and ticket sales are vital. If you get down to a certain number of tickets, then you can say nobody else in this queue. Yeah. It's fair to say that we will be selling tickets on the day, based on the ticket sales pattern thus far. We will let everybody know, probably roughly, the, the morning of the show, what, if any, fingers crossed, tickets are going to go on sale that day. Yeah. Months ago, Paul Hillier was crowned bedroom DJ of the year, and part of his prize is a trip to New York. He's leaving today with his girlfriend, Claire, but as usual, he's running late. Making Liverpool's Millennium Party a success is all about detail. Cream's Jane Casey has realised there aren't enough car parking spaces for the estimated 35,000 clubbers coming to the city centre. So I'm saying I feel like the voice in the wilderness, car parking, car parking. They're doing all the things. The knock-on effect is massive. Yeah. I think we need to get together again, perhaps Cream, us and the police, to discuss car parking issues on the north side. <laughs> Paul's trip to New York has started badly. His girlfriend Claire's furious with him for making them late. We're cutting a bit fine, Paul. No, we're not. Look, don't worry, we'll make it, all right? We'll be fine. I think you think you can just pop on a plane, Paul, just turn up and go, right, where's my plane? Marky J runs Garlands, Liverpool's most successful gay club, with his glamorous assistant Cian. And three times a year they organise ferries across the Mersey. The very first one I thought was particularly gay. There was lots of gay people on it. I thought, wow, this is super. You know, and lots of people have come from out of town to have gone on it as well. So I've got no idea who's going to be on this boat tonight, but there will be. Some nice, beautiful people. <laughs> At Heathrow, it's bad news for Paul Hillier and his girlfriend Claire. Despite Paul's confidence that they'd make it in time, they've missed their flight to New York. We uh, didn't get here on time. I thought we were going to be here on time, but unfortunately, um, we got here at uh, half one. I thought it was 10 to 2. Got to hang around for a couple of hours to see standby apparently they're going grades one to ten so we're number five so as Paul says we're just the lurgy that of the pond at the moment just waiting tickets for tonight's fairies boat party cost 15 pounds each and Sian splashed out on a new outfit it's the cheapest and the best <laughs> Work's going on round the clock at Cream to prepare for the Millennium Party. While all the staff are involved in planning the event, car parking, not clubbing, is uppermost on the management's mind. 
Upstairs, Jane and James are having another meeting with the council bigwigs, but this time it's good news. English partnerships had a surveyor <coughs> looking at a piece of land, which is the only large piece of land down the dock with 10,000 cars for parking. And it's called Clarence Dock. It's an old dock that's been filled in. Have we got any feedback on yeah, that? Yeah, what we're going to do um, is we're going to spend £50,000 turning it into a proper, secure dock. Did the survey come yeah. through all right I yesterday? Be I believe that that's all in hand. Fabulous. Now, what we're going to have to do to cover our costs is charge. Do it. It yeah. won't cost the earth, but it'll be a couple of quid per, per vehicle. Definitely. Um, well, if you came into town on a normal night anyway, NCP are not going to let you in for free. No, so, well, I mean, you know, charging happens anyway, yeah. 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 Ferries across the Mersey has set sail. It's one of the highlights of Liverpool's clubbing calendar and attracts a glamorous upmarket crowd of 400 gay and straight clubbers who spend five hours partying up and down the Mersey. All over Britain, the night's clubbing is getting started. DJ superstar Paul Oakenfold, who's just returned from a world tour, is on his way to play at Super Club Mezzanine with promoter Charlie Chester. Well, there's nothing like England. It's my home and it's the best crowd in the world. I mean, I've been in America a lot. Uh, I've also started the uh, first uh, leg of my tour in Asia, playing in China and Vietnam and Bali and Kuala Lumpur. But there really isn't nothing like the English crowd, and I really look forward to, to getting home. I did Sydney last weekend, which was actually really good. The ferries across the Mersey boat parties start and finish at Liverpool's Pierhead, site of Cream's Millennium Party of a Lifetime. Access all areas at Mezzanine is one of Britain's top club nights, attracting all the big name DJs. And Oki's already played there twice this year. Party on through the night, Paul Hillier, who finally caught a plane, is arriving in New York. Clubber and ex-table dancer Luana is determined to be the next Denise Van Outen. She's got an agent, made a showreel, and has just landed her first presenting job, a corporate video for Glam Club Ultima. <laughs> <laughs> Since winning the DJ competition, Paul Hillier's life has changed dramatically. Every weekend he travels hundreds of miles playing gigs. This trip is a rare chance to spend some time with his girlfriend. Lancashire is big too, and sadly Luana's lost on her way to Ultima. Well, I know I'm blonde and a bit dizzy at home, but the fact is, I've never been around him before. There's no bloody signs. There's one side saying it's, it's hay coal, then it stops. Well, he's just a way he's up here. Right. James Barton's in London, and he's taking his wife Catherine to the Music Awards, the club industry's Oscars. Cream's been nominated for three, and he wants to win them all. Are you nervous, baby? I'm um, a little bit. What, what are we nominated for? Best club, best event, best Ibiza club. Bugged out a nominator for best under cl underground club, Seb's nominator for best DJ. Good, we could smash it. <laughs> it's Luana's TV debut, and she's facing her first hurdle. She's got to ride and talk at the same time, and the weather's not helping yeah, either. Thank you. The things I do for you, Dan, you know how cold it is up here? My nipples are like bullets. <laughs> There's only one, one award for what we do, and it's, it's this one. You know, I think people try and make out that it doesn't matter, but it does. It does. It's nice to win, isn't it? Yeah. Shit's a Luana's presenting skills are being tested to the limit. Now she's having to interview clubbers. If I was in the bedroom with you now, why would you tantalise me to your bed? Oh, go on. Pretend you I'm your man. Come on. I'd have to lay it down. Right, lie me down. Right. 
I'd be lying down. I really got to do this. And what would you do to me? Oh, God, I really have to. What do you James and Catherine are en route to the Music Awards with Cream Money Man Jim King. For weeks, they've been hatching a secret plan to hype their Millennium Party. They're lasering their logo onto the awards building. Oh, it is. Oh, fuck. Oh. See the green thing going right yeah. to the middle? Yeah. Oh, it's on the back of the other wall, looks oh. it. Yeah. Perfect. You can't. Oh, let's see. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, we've really told it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Luana's going from strength to strength. If you could describe tonight in one word, what would it be? Extravagant. Extravagant. That's good. Is that, is that good enough word? You like extravagant. At the Music Awards, James Barton is one of the club industry's movers and shakers. Celebrities including Boy George, Seb Fontaine, Carl Cox and Judge Jules have all turned out for this highlight of the club calendar. Tickets for the event cost £200. I'm Luana. I'm here first time today with Naomi. And we're here tonight to present Blazing Saddles. So we stay are. tuned for a Don't go Give a warm round of applause for your host this evening, the most powerful man in dance music and the official funk soul mother, Pete Tong and Zoe Ball. Event of 99. And the nominations are. Homeland. The Gate Clasher Summer Ball. Creamfields. Batboy Slim vs. Armand Van Helden. And Radio 1 in Ibiza. And nothing serious, I promise. The winner is Big B Boutique. So Ultima, Luana's first presenting gig is over, and now she can get down to the serious business of clubbing and making new friends. Our next award is uh, noted for a certain amount of animosity and rivalry, handbags and small places, all that stuff is the best. It's time for the best club award, and James really wants to win. Ultima happens six times a year in stately homes in the northwest of England. It attracts an older, glamorous crowd, and tickets cost £30 each. The dress code is strict, and the music policy is uplifting vocal house. It's nice because we never won an award last year, so it's quite nice to pick one up. We were really hard tonight, Ibiza this year, and I think we had a very good club, but there was a lot of good clubs there as well, so we're really pleased, really pleased. All the superstar DJs released their own mixed CDs. Seb Fontaine's is just out, and he's leaving for a three-day tour of Canada and the US to promote it. He'll be playing to crowds of over 10,000 people.
James Barton is back in Liverpool. With only days to the millennium and millions of pounds riding on its success, there's a big problem. Tickets aren't selling. James's brother Scott reckons people think it's an outdoor event and that they'll freeze to death. There's still a lot of people out there not realising it's a heated structure. We're a roof on, basically. The problem is, is that, you know, you can't... You just can't get that information to everyone, do you know what I mean? You know, it's on the flyers. It's, it's just impossible to get it to every single fucker who's, you know, out there. Kate Finley's at the bottom of the clubbing ladder. She works part-time for Cream, and today she's handing out flyers for the Millennium event. The club's printed half a million as part of its nationwide publicity campaign and has spent over a quarter of a million pounds publicising the event. Back at Club HQ, despite the mounting pressure, James Barton's convinced he's got what it takes to deliver. There's two things that you need when you do shows like this, and you, you need to use both of them, and that's your imagination and your fucking balls. And it's as simple as that. And if you're not prepared to use both of those things, you shouldn't even be thinking about doing these type of events. Scott King, the budding Liverpool club entrepreneur, is having his first taste of success with Altered State, the dance act he manages. After good reviews, a record label is now interested in signing them. Yeah, man, it's really wicked. We've, uh, we've got a meeting next week with Charlie Hall and Maurice from Space uh, about signing to their union label uh, for development. It's a uh, pretty exciting time at the minute. It's couldn't be better coming into like, the new year. Kate Finley's finished flyering and has headed to the recording studio. She's a budding pop star. She hasn't got a deal or a label, but her dad used to play guitar for 60s pop sensations Herman's Hermits. I want to be the one you run to. Oh, I want to be the one you come to. You know you can count on me, babe, to be tough. Oh, let me be the one, the only. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, stop! <laughs> I forgot the words. It's almost the end of Paul Hillier's four-day trip to New York, and he's taken his girlfriend Claire and his video camera to Central Park, where they found some breakdancing buskers. I used to do it eight years ago. Did you? Uh, Sad but true. Right, Dom. You're right. Did you hear that? I didn't know that. Hey, uh, we're in Vancouver now. Five-hour internal flight. It's pretty bad, actually. And that's where the uh, local hockey team plays. I think they're called the Canucks, but probably going to get roasted and that's really wrong. But uh, Vancouver's really beautiful. It's really nice. We met the guys. The guys are downstairs. They're going to take us to go see the venue now. So we'll take the camera. And, uh... Basically, everything's looking good for tonight. Kate's finished her demo, but doesn't know what to do now and needs advice from her dad. Can't I just ring up the record companies and ask them who the head scout is? No. Nope. Why not? Because that doesn't work. You've got to get in and see the right people. There's thousands of CDs around the record companies every single week. Most of them end up in the bin, they don't even listen. Yeah, but do people send them to the scout or do they, actually, do they just send them to like EMI Records or something? Can no, you no, send no. them by name? You get a contact, yeah, then we send them. Can't I just find out where they live in Camp Oxide House until you give me a record deal? You could do. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen like that, I don't know. Mm. I so. Seb Fontaine's checking out the party venue. Check this out, this is good. Go and hide this yacht here for an after party. <laughs> <laughs> You can be rest assured that I won't be on the bloody half of the car's yacht. I've got a flight to catch tomorrow night. This is general admission right there. Right. Okay. Now, this is the paid VIP, and you get up by the escalator, and over there. And then that's the real VIP level up there. How'd you go? That's a pretty impressive place, actually. Things must be pretty good. 
Scott King's career is really taking off. As well as managing a dance act and promoting his own club mishmash, he also DJs. Tonight he's playing at Medication, a student night at Nation, the home of Cream in Liverpool. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's Medication. It's not Saturday night at Cream, it's Wednesday night, and, but there's still a thousand people in the main room. And we've still got to entertain them just to the same degree as, you know, the, the guys you see week in, week out after. It's Paul Hillier's last night in New York, and he's made this a trip to remember for his girlfriend, Claire. So why are you smiling? I just gonna bought my wedding band from Tiffany's. Uh-huh. Are you sick, darling? You've just spent so much money today. Yeah. I'm pick six, we've spent too much money today. None of it was on records or music. This is it for Scott King. Tonight's gig is the biggest he's ever played. When he DJs at his own club, it's to a crowd of hundreds. Tonight, he's moved up a league. There's kids out there who, who dream of playing football at like Wembley, and you know, this is like the equivalent. I mean, I, it's not a Saturday night, but there's a thousand people in that main room later on. And to be stood, you know, where, where, where all your heroes have stood and played, and, you know, like the sashes and the open folds, and nah, it's just, it's just like, so far, it's got to be the pinnacle of everything that's happened to be playing here tonight. Playing to thousands is nothing new to Seb Fontaine, and he's about to start his set in Vancouver. Vancouver, come on! Scott's on, and he's loving every minute. The dance scene in Canada is still an underground phenomenon, but it's getting bigger all the time. UK DJs make regular appearances at clubs in Toronto, Quebec and Vancouver. Scott's DJ set at Nation is over and Jason Jones, the promoter of the student night, is happy with his debut. And so is Scott. So you enjoyed it? Yeah, very much so. Very, very much so. Can't thank you enough, mate. A pleasure. Thank you very much. Any time. Show me the money. And the women you get here, man. The women you get here. The women here are second to none. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I, in fact, I push the boat out and go as far as saying the women here are even better than the Saturday night women. Yeah. Seb Fontaine's in L.A. He's only there for one night to play at a major dance festival before he flies home. Right, we're here in uh, Beverly Hills. This is a really nice hotel called The Standard, which is really nice. Which, uh, check out the Blue House Hotel. But we're going to do, um, we're going to play some table tennis, and then I think we're going to get drunk. Paul Hillier's back from the States and heading off to play at Trade in Manchester. His fiancée, Claire, is not going with him tonight, but she's making sure he won't go hungry. Paul, you better hurry up. Hello. Right, Paul, yeah. you got... How many sandwiches have you got? Ham and mustard, cheese and pickles. Well trained. <laughs> Cyberkid and clubbing fanatic Joe Dale is getting ready for a big night out. She's driving 120 miles from her home in Worksop to Cream. Really. Should have actually set off about half an hour ago, but I'm late as always. Times and clubs don't just mix, you just meet each other if and when and where. <laughs> James Barton's about to speak to the nation. With the Millennium Party still not sold out, he's arranged an interview with Radio One's Pete Tong to help him get the message across that the event is taking place indoors. 
if I get into sort of go, so you know, it, we're not all going to be standing out in the open air, and I can then go, no, 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 you know, we've got a structure which is fully heated, takes 30,000 people, one of the biggest in the world. Last time it was used for the MTV Awards. Yeah, it's, right. you know, it's got bars, everything inside, and it's. Uh, Cool, okay. After eight years of trying, Paul Hillier's DJ career has taken off in the last few months. He now earns up to £250 a gig and travels over 400 miles a week. After playing trade tonight, he's planning to go clubbing at Cream. Drive safely. Thanks. Bye, Steve. In LA, Seb Fontaine's off to a gig too. He can earn £5,000 a night, plus he gets superstar treatment from the promoters who book him. We've got a bit of a disco roof going on in this cell. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll see you a bit nearer the event anyway. Another DJ superstar on the road tonight is Alex P. The weekly dance show on KISS FM that he co-presents with Brandon Block is a must for London clubbers. Tonight he's heading up the M1 to a gig at Cream, where he has a monthly residency. In London, Pete Tong is getting ready to go live on air with James Barton. With all of Britain's super clubs, Gatecrasher, Ministry, Home and Fabric holding big Millennium Night parties, James needs to push his event to make it a sellout. Tonight, the Essential Selection on Radio 1, and I've got James Barton on the phone. How are the preparations going then for Cream 2000? The Millennium knees up. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going really well. I mean, we've all systems go here. What is this structure then? It's basically a big, a big enormous sort of warehouse thing. Um, fully floored, fully heated. Bars, all kinds of things, and it's going to take 30,000 people. <laughs> Alex P is one of Britain's busiest DJs. He plays an average of six gigs a weekend and travels hundreds of miles around Britain. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, 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 easy. <laughs> okay, and have you got a location for me yet? Where are you going to put me? We've got two great options for you. One in the pub. There's actually there's actually a pier head pub overlooking the river, so you know we won't have to go far for a beer. Like that. Uh, but probably the best option is there's a there's, there's there's a room in the live buildings which gives us panoramic views of the city and the river. And um, you know we'll be doing your um, your sort of last big gig of the millennium uh, from there, I suppose. Yeah, it's the last Friday. It's the last uh, weekend of this millennium. It's the first one of the uh, next millennium. So, yeah, yeah. Groundbreaking moment. All right, mate. Thanks a lot. Thank you, James. See you soon. Bye. Good. Done. DJ groupie Joe Dale's on the road, too. Paul Van Dyke's her favourite, but Alex P comes a close second, and she's desperate to meet him tonight at Cream. I'm really looking forward to going to Cream, because I've never actually uh, been there before. I've heard an awful lot about it. And... Um, also, a while back, I think it was Mixmag, took a load of Gatecrasher people to Cream and a load of Cream people to Gatecrasher as well. So a lot of people that I know have actually done them. So I'd like to just, well, see what it's about and to, to know what I'm talking about. After his four-hour drive, Paul Hillier has arrived in Manchester to play at the Paradise Factory, home of trade. Seb's at the Zen Festival on the outskirts of L.A. There are 12,000 people expected for one of the biggest clubbing events on America's west coast. Well, Alex P is living up to his reputation as a party animal on the decks. Trade is one of Britain's oldest gay clubs. Paul's been signed by their DJ agency and is now a regular at their nights.
through like, the Himalayas and leaving footprints. Paul Hilly is on the road again. He's making his first trip to Cream, but it's late and he can't find it. Right, that's it. Up there. Do you, know where, do you know where we're going, Steve? Absolutely no. Matt, where are we going? You got the instructions, mate. Where's Cray? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Second on the right. Hey, you're Second rigged right, yeah. That's the cream shop. It's cream up that way, yeah? Cream up there? Yeah. How do I get round there, then? <laughs> right, it's up there. It's up there, but how do, how do we get there? I don't know. It's cream. After driving the 40 miles from Manchester, Paul's finally found cream. Uh, all right, mate. It's finished now, fellas. Sorry. He's out of luck. He's arrived too late, and because of licensing laws, no one's allowed in after one o'clock. I never had so much fucking shit in my life. Do you know what I mean? The one club was going to go to. That's typical, isn't it? The fucking we come racing out of Manchester. I'd rather, I'd rather stay at that fucking gig in I that know. case. The night is over at Cream, and DJ groupie Joe Dale finally gets to meet Alex P. First time I've ever been here, and it was absolutely brilliant. Kicks ass, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, most Kicks definitely. Ass. Whereabouts are you playing next? Well, uh, God, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing for uh, next to Tell probably. Yeah. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> That's what my agent's for, they do everything for yeah. Oh, you know what it is? What? It was a southern accent. I didn't like it. It would have been northern. That, that, yeah, they would have been like, oh, hang on oh, a minute. They're going to drink us out of shandy, <laughs> lads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck it. Let's go in here. Bollocks. <sighs> Seb's still going strong in L.A. After 10,000 miles in four days, DJ Seb Fontaine is looking forward to catching up on some lost sleep. But Vanessa, his wife and manager, has other plans. You promised me you'd be up and dressed. <laughs> the world of the superstar DJ is very competitive. But Pete Tong, Fatboy Slim and Paul Oakenfold have collaborated on a new CD. Their promotional launch is causing mayhem in London's Regent Street as their fans go crazy. In Liverpool, Cream's money man Jim King and Jane Casey are still busy sorting out plans for the millennium. They're not leaving anything to chance. So after Cream Fields, the majority of the complaints would be about low crew. Yeah. So no matter what great show we've done, <laughs> some kids lost his hundred and fifty. Some kids coat. lost his hundred and fifty yeah. quid coat. He's left in the cold in Liverpool. It's New Year's Day. He's got no car keys, etc., etc. It's a major problem. So for us, it's a really important sure. uh, customer service mm. Po mm. point, you know. Seb Fontaine is playing in Cardiff, Birmingham and Liverpool on Millennium Night, but today he's not worrying about work. He's got Christmas on his mind. Jim and Jane's cloakroom meeting still going on, but a solution's in sight. We'll either give them wristbands and we can make 
quite nice ones, which you know could mm -hmm. could be a, a little memento in a way yeah. of the night. Um, that's one system we were thinking about using. Another system would be to tag them via those guns. Mm -hmm. um, so once using the dry cleaners. Yeah. yeah. Seb's decorated the tree and has brought his son Herbie in to give it his seal of approval. Where are the lights? Where are the lights? lights. Yeah, lights. Yeah. <laughs> give me five. <laughs> right, well, the tree has got the official Herbie seal of approval now. <laughs> Clubber and beauty queen Alex Bell is currently holder of the prestigious Miss Winsford title. Her only contractual requirement as Miss Winsford is to switch on the town's Christmas lights, and tonight's the night. Right, I'm getting ready to go and switch the Christmas lights on as Miss Winsford. Mom? Mom? Can I have my sash, please? Have you got it down there? Bring it up and I'll put it in my bag. No, we're not taking a carrier bag, Mum. No, I've got a nice plastic bag. I don't want to get all messed up. Get the plastic bag. I don't need my, don't need my tiara, do I? <laughs> Luana's TV career is really taking shape. Today she's guest presenting on live clubbing show Train Spotters in Norwich. She's not being paid for doing it, but when you're starting out, you need all the experience you can get. Seb Fontaine's had his busiest and most successful year ever. He's played all over the world, been nominated as Best DJ at the Music Awards and taken over as Cream Resident from Paul Oakenfold. Now he's facing a frantic few days over Christmas and the millennium. I mean, this is what I need more in my life. I need more of this. Like, we've seen cream fields, we've seen everything, we've seen some real amazing stuff. But I can't, I can't do that well unless I've got this as well, if that makes sense. I need, I need some tranquility and some time alone and, you know, I just need to relax. I'm not country to pop belief I'm not on the champagne hunt <laughs> it's really, you know 24 hours a day I you know I, I need all this kind of stuff it's really important to me it looks like Luana's career has come full circle as guest presenter on train spotters she's been called in to show the real presenters her pole dancing tricks of the trade To shake your booties. What's Come on, do the man. I want you to shake your booties on these poles. Come on, let's see what you're made of. I can't wait. I'm copy what you're doing. Right. Cue that music, Yep. More thrust, more thrust. Can you get sexy with it, Colin, please? <laughs> Alicia, get your cleavage around the pole. <laughs> get a bit of cleavage, there, Alicia. <laughs> Colin and Alicia went slightly over the top again, as usual. Anyway, join us after the break, where we'll be joined by Gloria and Amber. Okay. See you after the break. Bye. Is that better? Yeah, my better. Cream regular and single mum Maria has been saving for weeks for her Millennium ticket. It's her Christmas present to herself, and after buying it, she's taking her kids to see Father Christmas. There you go. Smashing. Okay, so. £2.50. And there we are, proud of the one of the <laughs> Okay, now what we're need is a baby scissor. <laughs> Despite being Miss Winsford, Alex Bell hasn't a clue where she's meant to go to switch on the Christmas lights in the town. She's lost and she's late. It's up there, isn't it? Up where? Go on, Lee. Up what? there on the left. Where? Might buy all the lights here. Well, there's Winsford. What's the name there? Where? With the, the round thing lit up. I don't know what you're talking about. Look there, right, the shopping centre. Yeah. 
Right, okay. And the pub is opposite the entrance to the, um, what's the name? Sweet, isn't it? Am I going down here, then? Yes. Right. Maria's kids are as excited about seeing Father Christmas as she is about going to the pierhead. The little mice. Boo. Boo. Are they mice? Yeah. Is that <laughs> After failing to get into Cream as a clubber last week, Paul Hilly is on his way back. He got a call asking him to play the first set there tonight. He can't believe his luck, but as usual, he's late. The biggest night ever, I'm playing Cream, and I'm bloody late. It wasn't my fault. It was not my fault. Queen Alex arrived too late for the glamorous Christmas lights ceremony at Winsford, and she didn't get to switch them on. But she's bravely hanging around in the crowd, wearing her sash and watching the fireworks. She can't stay too long, though. She's going clubbing tonight. For the Christmas, I want free membership to the cream for the rest of my life. Oh, no problem, now. Can you get that for me? Yeah, I'm the chairman there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, thank Ooh, you, Father Christmas. Very well done. Thank you, Father right. Christmas. Paul Hilliers arrived in Liverpool, but he can't remember where the club is, and his girlfriend is not impressed. It's down here. What is the hotel or what? Oh, it's down here somewhere. Oh, Alex's mum is more disappointed than she is about the Christmas lights. You see, the thing is, Alex, you won't okay. ever be able to do it again because you can only be Miss Winsford once. Oh, so what? Never mind. Paul's finally found cream, and with minutes to go, he's changing in the car before the biggest gig of his life. Fresh from her TV presenting success, Luana's celebrating with a night out clubbing. Paul's on first tonight. If he gets the crowd going, this gig could really make a difference to his DJ career. Cream bouncer Leslie's one of 17 door staff. Nice. Is everybody on this side picking up prepaid tickets? Yeah. Yeah. Every picking up prepaid tickets? Yeah. Is everybody on this side on the guest list? One man who doesn't need to be on the guest list is James Barton. He's confident that everything is under control for the millennium and he's up for a night out. <laughs> After her Christmas lights disappointment, beauty queen and clubber Alex Bells made it to the club and she's ready to party. Maria's there too. Even though he's on first, Paul Hilliers filled the room and his girlfriend's forgiven him for being late.
in the next episode. 35,000 clubbers are expecting the night of their lives on New Year's Eve. Top name DJs are travelling all over the UK that night, but Liverpool's the main attraction. Cream regulars Maria and Scott have bought their tickets and can't wait. James and his management team are planning a brilliant, spectacular to see.